Alright, welcome back everyone. So in this video, we're gonna go over an other fluid mechanics problem, another momentum transfer problem. So yeah, we have two cylinders, okay? We have fluid enclosed between two cylinders. And now this is an application in lubrication of shafts, okay? So the outer cylinder, if you guys read the problem, the outer cylinder is rotating at an angular velocity of uh whatever that symbol is i think it's oh my uh, that symbol all right and the inner cylinder is stationary i forgot what this symbol is okay um i'll okay i'll, I'll have to do some research but anyway i um the ohm symbol whatever that is and the inner cylinder is stationary and we have to derive the velocity profile all right and once we have the velocity profile, we can do good things. We can do a lot of things once we have the velocity profile. So let's start off with our assumptions. Okay, and like most um, transport phenomena problems, we're gonna be doing, we're currently dealing with everything at steady state. All the partial derivatives with respect to time are gonna go to zero. Laminar flow, okay? that's uh that's gonna help us that's gonna keep things a lot simple for now incompressible fluid density is constant that's what that means by the way oh neglect end effects okay so what does this mean let me stop for a second and emphasize what does this mean so obviously um we, we've taken a uh if if i were to actually draw this let's see this would be something like a very, we would have two cylinders, okay? And at the end, there's obviously going to be some sort of fitting at the end, right? Um, there's going to be some sort of other machinery or something. And at the end, there are going to be disturbances, right? So we're going to have disturbances, some level of turbulence at the end. So we're going to have some level of turbulence at the end. And for our analysis, we're just going to ignore that, okay? All right. With that said, we're going to move on to our continuity equation. And if you guys remember, and if you guys remember, continuity equation is just a total mass balance. Okay, it's just a statement of conservation of mass. Total mass balance. There we go. Okay. We only have velocity, if you look at this problem, we only have velocity in the theta direction because we have rotational flow. So that means that all the other components of velocity are gonna go to zero. All right, VR goes to zero. Let's switch to a different color. VR goes to zero, okay? And VZ goes to zero. All right, and what else? Oh, steady state. So our continuity equation simplifies to, all right, this is gonna be the, this is the uh, simplified form of our continuity equation. And we're gonna be using this result, we're gonna be using this result when we solve the Navier-Stokes equations, which we have right here, the Navier-Stokes equation. <coughs> Give me one second. All right, Navier-Stokes equations. Usually the strategy is to go through each one of these step by step, but um, in my experience, the component in which you have flow is gonna be the one that's gonna be the most interesting, all right? So we have the uh, radial component, we have the theta component, and we have the axial component, all right? So, first off, steady state, that means that using the steady state assumption, all the transient terms go away. So, in the R direction, in the R component, we know that the velocity in the R direction is equal to zero. So, we are everywhere you see VR, that's going to go to zero. There you go, bye-bye, bye-bye. All right. Bye bye. So everywhere, everywhere you see VR, that term is going to go to zero. 
anywhere else there there are two VR so this is gonna take some practice this is gonna take some practice before you get really good at it but and then it's just gonna become second nature hopefully what else um um the velocity in the z direction is also zero so let's see if any of those terms are gonna survive hmm let's see bye 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 okay um what else so <coughs> excuse me our result from the previous our result from the continuity equation tells us that the <coughs> the derivative of the angular velocity in the theta direction with respect to theta is also going to be zero so that means that this component is going to go to zero hold up all right and let's see so and this component is also going to go to zero and uh, what else oh yeah you too and we're gonna ignore effects of gravity we're gonna ignore effects of gravity in this problem which means that all the gravitational terms are going to go to zero all right so our navier stokes equation in the rate the radial component turns out to be negative v theta squared divided by r is equal to the gradient of pressure in the radial direction okay and the theta and the z component all right the z component turns out to be zero is equal to the pressure grid the change in pressure with respect to z so there is no change in pressure with respect to z uh, in the z direction right that's what this equation is telling us now the theta direction the theta component is the one in which we have flow so that's the equation that's going to be the most interesting so let's uh, look at that shall we so we have oh i missed a term here one of these terms i this term was supposed to be zero my bad my bad okay so let's see if we can simplify this equation even further we have negative 1 over r dp d theta plus the viscosity times ddr 1 over r ddr r v theta and yeah that's about it so now we have to uh, now we have to ask ourselves some question about this term if we go back to the geometry of the problem let me, let me just uh, sketch it right here so i have two cylinders all right does it make sense for pressure to be different at this point than this point all right so that's basically having a pressure gradient in the theta direction does just does not make sense due to symmetry we cannot have a difference in pressure in the theta direction because of symmetry so this term is going to go away because of symmetry all right and let's see what we're left off with we're left with zero is equal to gdr actually now we can just switch from partial derivatives to <coughs> total derivatives r dr r v theta so once again ladies and gentlemen we have a second order ode second order ode that's been a recurring theme so far we're gonna need two boundary conditions all right we're gonna need two boundary conditions in the radial direction need two bc's in the r direction and do we have two boundary conditions well we do now that that well we do now if we go back to the problem bc1 at r equals inner radius the radius of the inner cylinder 
my velocity was zero no slip because the inner cylinder was stationary all right and boundary condition two at r equals outer radius we have our outer cylinder was rotating so v theta is going to be r the radius times the angular velocity okay so the translational velocity is radial velocity times the angular velocity to get the units of length per time and this is again a result of no slip boundary condition so yeah like always in the next part of this video we're going to perform the integration and use the boundary conditions to solve for the constants of integration and see what else can we do once we have the velocity profile so yeah thanks for sticking till the end and i hopefully i'll see you guys in the next video